Control in every one of the eight years of its brief existence. By 1971, nearly all the locomotives of the predecessor Pennsylvania and New York Central Railroads had been repainted into the somber dark Brunswick green. The railroad was mired deeper and deeper in bankruptcy, and a new national passenger carrier, Amtrak, was starting to emerge from the dark shadows of the PC's paint scheme following its launching on May 1, 1971. Emery Goulash had his movie cameras trained on the action as it unfolded. scenes such as this GP7 in Chicago preparing four ex-Union Pacific coaches for an outbound train were typical. Much of Amtrak's earliest years emphasized its legacy as predominantly a Penn Central spin-off, using locomotives and often passenger equipment once owned by the PC. By October 1971, Amtrak had seven months of operations behind it. Meanwhile, a Santa Fe GP7 is pulling the empty passenger cars of the recently arrived Super Chief and El Capitan out of Chicago's Union Station to the Santa Fe Yard. Once there, the cars will be prepared for the next departing train. Many of the surviving trains remained relatively unchanged for many months after the Amtrak takeover. This included the use of dome cars on the former Santa Fe trains. The high-level cars of the El Capitan were still used and were to provide the impetus for Amtrak to have more high-levels built a few years later. This is an Amtrak train, even if the power was pure Santa Fe. The wisps of steam indicate the heritage cars are heated by steam. Electric heating was still several years in the future. The GP-7 rolls past the passenger car yard, headed for Union Station. Number 5959 was the highest number GP-7 on the Penn Central locomotive roster. The Chicago skyline forms a backdrop. Nearby, former Grand Trunk Western steam locomotive 5629, now privately owned, is in winter storage. It occasionally stepped out on the high iron to power excursion trains.